Here's another change that a lot of you should find very interesting. I am in a 1920 50p project. Traditionally, if I went to file and then export and then burn to disk, it would be greyed out because you cannot make 50p Blu-ray discs and you cannot make 50p DVDs. With 8.3, you'll notice there's a new option that says format. I can't make a Blu-ray disc at 1920 1080, but I could make one at 1287.20. So it's gone in there and it's automatically selected that. I can click on here and I can choose other options. So for example, I don't have the option here to make an NTSC disc out of a PAL one, but what I could do is I could change it to a 50i disc or a 24p disc or any of the other settings that you're actually allowed to do on a Blu-ray. If I selected DVD, then I can choose to do a 72050 DVD. Now up to now, what you've had to do if you're in a 50p project is export a movie, put that into a 50i project, then add your chapters and make your DVD or your Blu-ray out of that. You don't have to now, you can just say, choose the DVD setting in there, set your menus up, and then write it, and it'll convert it for you. Hooray! Does it do as good a job as exporting a movie from a 50p project and putting it into a 50i one? To be honest, we're not sure. EDIUS 8.3 is pretty new and we haven't had a time to run a few tests on that. I'll be very interested to see what results other people get, what you actually think. Does it look as good if you change it in a 50p project to, say, DVD than it does making up a movie and whacking it onto the timeline? Because we're not entirely sure whether the Lanxos scaling that exists inside of EDIUS is actually included here or not. When you actually go to create a disc, obviously you press the create button and it pops up with the warning saying, yeah, that's your project, that's what you're going to output. This format conversion may affect the quality of the image. Yeah, but of course it's going to affect the quality of the image, you're resizing it. Do you want to carry on? Yep. And off you go and you have to wait for it to make up the disc as before. It's just nice that you can do it from inside of a 50p project or a 4k project or whatever. As a comparison, what I've got here is an AVI file that was exported at 50p from my 50p project. And I've got the file that was made up by the burned disk and I whack them on the timeline in EDIUS and put them next to each other. I am in a widescreen standard definition project and Lanxos is set to be the scaling. So this is the best it will do if I make an AVI file. Now, to be perfectly honest, I can't see much of a difference between the two, looking at it here on the computer. You've got to see it playing because it's interlaced, and to me, those look both the same. But to be honest, you should not be judging this stuff on a computer screen, because computer screens do not show interlaced pictures properly. To judge this, you need to either make a DVD and look at both of them, or you need to pop this out through a black magic gizmo off to a TV and look at it there because you really, really can't judge it from looking at a computer picture. So in fact, the way I've set this up currently is pointless and you're not going to be able to see the results on this YouTube video because you really want to see it on a TV to notice if it's better. I would be interested to know what your comments are. Just please put comments below or send me an email. I'm just interested in what people think the results are, whether it is just the same or whether exporting an AVI still produces a better result. One of the big things actually is a big improvement on the way that EDIUS handles a 4K computer screen. Now I've got one of our desktop processor laptops that I'm filming this on and it has actually got a 4K screen on it. And if you put EDIUS 8.2 on there, a lot of it scaled, but a huge amount of it didn't. Well, now, if you look at EDIUS 8.3, let me just start off EDIUS, and you'll notice immediately if you've tried using EDIUS in 4K, things like the splash screen come up the right size. You'll notice in a second, there's a little flash there, a very, very small picture. That's my tmpeg plugin for EDIUS. Of course, Grass Valley have no control over that, and that still looks far too small on a 4K screen. This dialog box now looks correct. Again, lots of bits of that were quite small. Let me just start up a new project. Everything, as you can see, is all looking nice and scaled properly. The timeline is properly scaled. And I'm on a 4K screen, and if you look at the settings, it's a 4K screen which is scaled to 250% because you have to whack the scaling up an awful lot on a 4K screen, otherwise everything comes out really, really small. 
So huge amount of it are now working properly that weren't working before. The effects list is now working properly. You can see all the different effects. All this used to be too small to see. So it's got a lot better. Unfortunately, it's still not 100% finished. So the biggest thing, if you go into effects like the layouter, you'll notice that most of this is okay. It's just the keyframe section doesn't. You notice how small these things are. They are almost unreadable. Depends on your eyesight, I guess. The keyframing section of any filters that have got keyframing, like this, like three-way color corrector, they're all still too small to see. They haven't been fixed yet. Which to me is probably the biggest thing that I really need to be fixed because I do keyframe things quite a lot. There are other things, like if you go into Quick Titler, you know, the properties and everything else come up correctly, you'll notice these buttons are a bit small and the styles down here, they're a bit small as well. But actually the rest of it works okay. So there's a few little things like that which aren't fixed. And the biggest thing to me is probably that keyframing area. I mean, I can probably get away with it. I could probably just sort of stick a keyframe at the start and then move along and change something. I, mean, I don't necessarily have to see them, but if you want to start coming and fiddling with the graphs, for example, practically impossible until that bit's updated. So we're getting there. We're nearly at the stage where EDIUS works properly on a 4K screen, and we're an awful lot better than it was in previous versions. Another thing worth mentioning about this is if you have two screens on them of different resolutions, in Windows 10 you can set different scaling. So here I've got two screens. I've actually got three screens on this particular computer, but um, I've only got two of them activated. And you'll notice that I've got both of them set to 125% scaling. If you're using EDIUS and you're using two or three screens, they have to be set to the same scaling on all screens, which makes it difficult to mix a 4K screen with an HD screen, for example, because a 4K screen, you're going to have to whack this up to about 250% to make everything viewable, but you're not going to want that on an HD screen because everything is going to be too big. Again, that's still the same as it was before. Whether they'll fix that in a future version, I don't know, but it is something you have to be aware of. On every screen you're using on EDIUS, you need the same percentage scaling. I mean, normally it's not a problem. Normally you're using two screens that match, you'll have the same setting on both because it would be weird not to. It's if you're trying to mix a 4K screen with an HD screen where that might be an issue. And if you do that, it might cause EDIUS to crash. There's also been a couple of other small changes. For example, there's been a few bits of little redesigning inside the Grass Valley browser. So the setting box has changed slightly. You can see we've got an enable quick time import a tick box there. They've changed the look of the properties panel and they've added in a little snapshot button there so you can take a quick still image of whatever you're looking at down here if you want to. Another little new option we have is that under the favorites folder here, they now show you the desktop and the videos folder of your computer, which didn't previously pop up there straight away. Now, you might find if you've actually used the Grass Valley browser before and you've been cataloging stuff, this doesn't turn up automatically when you install 8.3. It'll be there automatically if you start everything from scratch, but if you've already got a database going it might not be there and you might still have to add them in manually which you would do by going to the favorites folder and then clicking on i and then adding in a favorites folder somewhere so for example here i'd add in the videos folder maybe i'll add in the pictures folder but as a default on new setups is actually putting desktop and videos under the favorites folder automatically which is a nice little addition the final thing worth mentioning is that in the primary color corrector, we've got a new standard color space, Fuji F-Log. Anyway, that's been a run through of all the new features in EDIUS 8.3. If you want to know more about EDIUS, visit the website www.dvc.uk.com. At the moment, we're doing a special offer on EDIUS systems. If you buy an EDIUS system from us and you buy the EDIUS Pro, we'll actually give you EDIUS Workgroup instead. So you get all the extra features like MXF export and the reduced resolution playback and so on for no extra money. We're also in the process of updating our popular EDIUS tutorial. And pretty soon from the website, you'll be able to buy either the whole thing or just individual sections if you just want to know about effects or you just want to know about importing and exporting. Finally, don't forget that if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have a lot more videos on there, including a whole section 
regarding all the new features that were added to the Creative Cloud version of Premiere Pro, and a section about editing in DaVinci Resolve and how that compares to using other programs. So we'll see you next time.